Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another Pro MUA Reacts video for you guys. You have been highly, highly requesting James Charles and this one video from him. So I'm gonna take a look at that today. A few things I just want you guys to bear in mind before we get into this is that today we are focusing solely on the makeup that he does nothing else that's all let's just discuss the makeup and second if this is the first time you've ever seen one of my videos my name is robert welsh i am a professional makeup artist meaning that it has been my sole paid job for the past 12 years just feel like i have to clarify that sometimes for people youtube isn't my job and i haven't been doing it for very long so um i have been doing makeup artistry since i was 18 that's when i started kind of training and and you know everything like that um this is before youtube and instagram i think we're even around so i've been doing it for a very long time and i understand that some people are like you can't just call yourself a professional and i would agree with you to an extent and that's why i make these videos to show that what you see online isn't always the best option for you there are better ways to do it or you know real more realistic ways so if that sounds like something you are interested in then please consider subscribing to my channel okay so today we are watching what really happened in 2019 like I said, um, this video is just about the makeup. I'm gonna critique the makeup, not him. And some people out there might be a little bit like, well, makeup has no rules. What's the point in this video? You can do whatever you want. Absolutely, you can do whatever you want. Creativity and individuality has no rules. However, makeup does have a theory and it's my goal to teach that theory for those people who want to learn it. So if you don't want to learn it, you're not interested in it, then maybe this video isn't for you. And as I always say in the beginning of these videos, these videos aren't throwing shade or spilling tea or reading anyone. Let's just do it. I'm gonna shuffle this way. 2020 so far has been treating me very, very well. And I really hope it's been the same for you guys. I truly feel like this is going to be our year. I just like am feeling it the energy and the vibes like all together and also i've pretty much like completely changed my everyday makeup routine i literally have so many new things so many new techniques so many new products this is a very wearable everyday type of makeup look but elevated to the next level and i think you guys are absolutely gonna love this so if you guys want to get ready with me and see my updated makeup routine talk a little bit about 2019 but more importantly talk about 2020 and all the fun things coming soon keep on watching so this is very interesting because I did do a reaction to um, a video where it was a group of um, influencers. So it will be um, interesting to see how he's changed it up since then because a lot of the stuff in that video wasn't really the best advice, but I feel like it was a video that was made to be more um, attention grabbing, if that makes sense. So we'll see what he does. It'll be nice to see his new techniques and, and how he's implementing them and, and if it's something that we can incorporate into our routines as well. I did get my eyebrows microphone and spoiler alert I am obsessed with the results I'm gonna tell you guys about it while I go ahead and conceal my brows which is now the first step of a makeup routine I know there's video footage of me out there saying that I would never do my eyebrows first but after trying this technique out in my celebrity makeup hacks video and getting them done I will honestly say this is like the best decision that I've ever made my makeup routine it now takes me like literally 30 minutes less and I'm obsessed with how they turned out I came across I think doing your brows first is a really, really good um, technique. It's something I like to incorporate into my own makeup and on clients as well. I find that, personally, I find when you do the whole base, foundation, concealer, whatever, and then you kind of try to go on with pencil or... Um, a pen, a marker, or powder. Sometimes you have to bring your brows up slightly higher than they actually are, or vice versa, you know? And then you're kind of trying to draw on top of a foundation, and you kind of get like this carve mark in the foundation, or if it's a pen, it kind of, um, dissolves into the, the foundation. So to get a perfect shape on your brows is a really, really nice thing to do. Brow carving, I'm not against. I know I'm kind of known for my more natural things, but brow carving is a really good way, if you don't even want a pencil in your brows, to carve out that shape. Um, is a really, really good technique. And it, you don't always have to do it super, super intense. It can always be one shade lighter than your skin tone. It doesn't have to be white, you know, or a really light shade. Um, it's something I really like to do, but that is a really good tip. Brows first is such a time saver. While the concealer is drying down a little bit, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the Dragon Beauty Color Corrector, just like always, and put this on my beard area. This step has not changed. I still wanna cover up my beard in five o'clock shadow as much as I possibly can. So now while this- Okay, that's, uh, you guys know how, how I feel about um, color. Okay, so you need to go and watch my Nikita Dragon video where I react to it. Cause my main issue, she was another person I featured in my, um, um, influencers thing and I reacted to her color correction in a way that she was saying that she likes to cover her five o'clock shadow 
First of all, she doesn't have one. <laughs> she has really, really, really amazing skin. So when you watch any of her videos, and I watch quite a few, she doesn't really have five o'clock shadow. And I do understand that um, there are some people out there who do need to incorporate a color correcting process into their um, routine. James is not one of them. The color correct, he doesn't not, he doesn't even need color correction under his eyes. There's no blue tone under his eyes. And that orangey color, we're aiming to cover a blue tone. Um, he could just use a light concealer and have a really nice highlighted area. The reason I bring that up because a lot of people kind of get upset that they don't know how to color correct properly. And the case is usually you don't need to. Um, you don't need to do that excessive color correction. A, for him, if he really wanted to do it, and for people who do suffer with a five o'clock shadow, you can actually just go for a deeper concealer. And I've used this technique many, many, many times on trans clients who want to wear makeup. Anyone who could potentially have a five o'clock shadow, you don't need to go as intense with this orange, especially if you want a quick and easy uh, makeup routine. Orange is not the best thing. You can go for, say I wanted to cover, I mean, I'm not gonna cover my whole beard, but say I shaved and I wanted to cover a five o'clock shadow. I would look for a more red tone concealer and that would be enough warmth to color correct that greeny tone that comes, that is there. Anyway, completely unnecessary color correction there. He has incredible skin, absolutely amazing skin. And I'm sure that's down to facials, him knowing how to look after his skin. That color correction is beyond unnecessary for him. So I'm just gonna grab my Tatcha water cream and a little fluffy brush. I'm just going to brush this on my skin. And I'm actually going to avoid my nose area because my nose gets really, really oily. And I've noticed that not moisturizing it honestly helps the foundation stay a little bit better. And then with the- Okay. <laughs> so I'm extremely oily, a very, very oily person. And I'm very aware that you have to do your skincare routine before your makeup may be completely different than your normal AM skincare routine if you're not gonna wear makeup that day, or your PM skincare routine. For example, I'm very oily. In the, in the morning, I'll use water-based, um, almost like gels and fluids in terms of moisturizers. Um, and at night, I'll use oils to hydrate my skin. If I'm going to wear makeup, I absolutely still have to hydrate slightly on my oilier areas. The moisturizer he uses is a very, very lightweight fluid-based moisturizer. I totally understand with other moisturizers and primers, it might be too much, but let's, you still need to prep your skin. If you want your foundation to look amazing, your skincare underneath is what's gonna make that happen. The foundation can only do so much. If priming is a problem and if moisturizing is a problem that creates too much moisture, you can absolutely do all your skincare and your primer and then powder before you do your foundation. And I know that's not really a rule, you know, a theory, but in makeup and same with art, I kind of feel like you have to learn these rules so you can break them in a constructive way. You can get sprays out there that contain powder. MAC Matte Fix Plus is a good one. Uh, um, Makeup Forever Ultra HD setting powder as well is a really good powder to use for that method because it's very finely jet milled. We don't want to go for like those baking powders or those really thick flowery almost texture powders because then it will interrupt with a texture of your um, foundation. You almost want a powder that is almost silky. I really like to work moisturizer into the skin with my hands. Push that moisturizer into the skin, get it involved with the skin. That's what it's there for. I feel like you get a better texture on the skin that way. And I feel like sometimes if product isn't cooperating with your skin or, or becoming part of your skin in terms of uh, um, skincare, it can then lead to problems later on with your foundation because you almost have this layer just sitting on top of your skin if your skin hasn't absorbed it. And it can kind of give you those patchier areas of foundation. I'm just going to grab a little bit of this and apply this area to my central cheek area, kind of just where I have like bigger pores to fill this in and smooth this out. And then finally, I know this is very dramatic, but like I said, this has been working well for me recently. I'm gonna grab the Fenty Beauty True Matte Primer and put a little bit of this onto my finger. And I'm just going to apply this primer to my nose. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using more than one primer. I think it's a really great technique. You wanna blur on the cheeks, blur on the cheeks. If you wanna mattify your nose, use something mattifying. Again, if we're relying so much on, so here's what confuses me a little bit. If he is so um, knowledgeable in the fact that these areas need different um, things to work with them, why have we not incorporated um, like a moisturizer that's different as well? Do you know what I mean? Like you can use different moisturizers on your face also. Literally my skin tone. That's literally my skin tone. Oh my God. Ah! We have officially found the color that is for me. I, like, this is 
2020 is gonna be my year of matching foundation. <laughs> also, I'm just blending this into my skin using the Juno and Co. Microfiber Sponge. And it's I know he's really happy to have found his shade, but I do think maybe it's just on camera because on camera your skin looks completely different to how it does in real life. But I think he's more neutral in, in tone where he needs a little bit um, of yellow and pink. And I think this one is maybe just just one little bit too yellow for him. All right, now that we have the base all on, moving on to concealer, nothing has changed. My Tarte Shape Tape, and this one is in the shape. So, <laughs> my... <laughs> <laughs> Concealer wise as well, again, he doesn't need that much coverage under his eyes. He has such amazing skin. Like he could get away with using a really sheer foundation, even on camera, because there's barely any blemishes on his skin, if any. And then working with it that way, I would love to see his concealer less than that, more focused on the cheekbone up here to raise this kind of area here. Um, and then a tiny bit on the inside corner, just not across this whole area here. You can use a tiny bit, just not that much. While we talk about March, I'm just going to set my face using the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. March was actually another really amazing month when it came to content on the channel. I got to put my linguistic skills to the test to go in the YouTube Rewind that that video was the number one most liked beauty video of 2019, which is ridiculous to think about considering the amount of beauty content that was released this year. But nonetheless, I am so grateful for it and I am so glad that you guys Personally, when I look at this much excessive powder, I really don't like it. Um, even if you're oily, again, I'm super oily and I would never use that much excess powder. I feel like your skin had a has, again, it's going back to, I, it, it really is personal opinion here again, and it's how you like your skin to look. I find that, he, I mean, his skin was amazing for absolutely incredible. This is a lot, a lot of foundation. He's a really young guy and he has incredible skin. There's so much product here. Is that how people like to look? Like, I mean, it's fine if you want to. Do you like to, it to be obviously wearing product? I just feel like we could have gone a lot less. That powder, like pushing all that powder into the skin. I said it before in the previous video. I think it's my um, Raw Beauty Christie one. We have this kind of trend where we like to choose a foundation, whatever foundation it is. We don't even bother to see if it's good enough, like if it's the right kind for our skin. And then we push a load of powder into it and make like this mask layer. Choose a foundation. If you feel you need that much powder and it doesn't last in your skin, find a foundation that is made for your skin type. Ex you know, explore your skin type, find out what it is and then use, and then maybe powder in areas just where you need that powder, like I need here now. It doesn't need that excessive um, amount of powder. To me, that's what it is. Powder isn't an all over product. It's a where you need it, when you need it. Fitum debut at fashion show. I was paired with one of the designers from the Fitum program and he made me a custom outfit and I got to walk down the runway, which was such a cool experience. One, I got to learn a lot more about being a runway model, which I already had a lot of respect for models to begin with, but after actually doing it. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this for very obvious bittersweet reasons, but on a positive note, I got to see Ariana Grande and Blackpink and Billie Eilish all perform live and they are three of my favorite artists of all time. I think the shade that is used to contour is actually a really nice shade. A lot of people contour with a bronzer or something that's too red. You know, they go in with um, a darker foundation, which when we use a darker foundation in our skin, it goes orange. So why are we using that to contour? Do you know what I mean? Like it's just warming up the area. Contour is to mimic shadow. Shadow is gray, shadow is dark. So the color his uses is actually really nice. A bit patchy in application. Um, Let me just rewind that and take a little look at his application. Debut at a fashion show. I was paired with one of the designers from the- Yeah, so he's holding the brush really, really close to the hairs, which means you get a denser, thicker application. Um, And that can be quite, especially with an angle brush, because he's not changing the direction. So he's, he has his angle brush like this, which is fine to, to drag down this way. But if you go backwards and forwards like this, grab an angle brush if you have one and then feel that kind of, it's almost like a bump as you go up. So ideally you wanna drag just down. So where he's going backwards and forwards, it's, it's creating, as you flick up, that moment when you flick it up, can you feel that kind of switch in the brush? It's leaving a patch there. So if we're gonna buff backwards and forwards, ideally you wanna use it on its side like this, so there's no angle, or just bring it down like this and then turn it round and then buff up this way. That angle on an angle brush is angled for a reason. It's meant to be flowing with a direction of product. If you're gonna go backwards and forwards like that, use a rounded top brush. That's why you sometimes can get some patchiness in blusher and bronzer. And when you hold it here as well, that's even more pressure. Just do it, grab an angle brush and just go backwards and forwards without moving it and you get, you'll feel that kind of, you, you, you'll see what I mean. I personally like to hold a contour brush, blusher brush, angle brush, whatever, right up at the top here, angle it with the skin. So I'm going downwards first. So I'll do a few strokes like this and then I can buff up this way, but I'm always lifting that brush off the skin, up, off, 
up, off, down, off, down, off. I'm never going on the skin up and, you know, that way. Too much detail about this for very obvious, bittersweet reasons. But on a positive note, I got to see our- Because you can see, I mean, look around his, the top of the corner of his forehead here and in the middle of the forehead there and then to the left, you can see these random dots of product. Um, and that again could be a lighting thing because when he moves it kind of it, it changes but you can see all these um, grabs of product and um, so he even needs to grab a, um, a different brush like a rounded headed brush for the forehead area and then use um, or in the forehead area just aim in one direction aim in one direction and then always lift your brush off the skin because you just get this patchiness. It looks it looks muddy, the contour looks muddy. And that's not because of a color because it's a great contour color. You can go and um, warm it up. It's because of those random patches of, of product here, more product here. It's just, it's just a, it's very sporadic in, in um, application. My contouring process on my face and my nose is pretty much the exact same, which is why I skipped through it because you guys have seen me do it literally a million times. But there is one thing that I do a little bit differently. So I'm gonna take my fluffy blending brush and take it to my same kind of like bronzy contouring shade. And then I like to take this fluffy brush and at the top of my nose contour, okay? I'm not talking about like the skinny portion because we still want it to be very, very snatched, but in this like kind of round area in between the nose and your eyebrow, I'm just going to run this color right up into here, blending it into the front of the eyebrow. Then I'm also going to take the excess of that color and blend it through the crease and then pull it up towards my temple. As you can see between this eyelid and Stunning. I love, I absolutely love that technique. It gives you, like I said, this endless flow of shadow. But also, if you're doing any eye look, make make that part of your bronze bronzing routine or your um whatever routine, because even if you just do it from this angle here, to lift that eye looks absolutely amazing. As well as doing that, it makes your cheekbone pop here because you're comparing it to two darker areas. So by keeping this middle bit light, it's gonna make that pop. Um, and just it's really, it's a really beautiful technique. If you imagine that with some mascara, done. In this eyelid, there is a noticeable difference. This one has a little bit more shadow in here, and with this kind of like lines flanking up and out like that, it just kind of like pulls the eye upwards, whereas this eye is just completely flat. So I think it just adds a really nice definition. That is so true. And listen, here's the deal with the amount of powder and the amount of product that he used. I feel like you need to add some kind of definition back into your face. Because when you mattify your whole face, you flatten it. There's nothing there anymore. So then you have to go in with more highlighter, more contour. So to do this, to add that definition is a really, really nice technique. This brush, I'm just gonna dip into the lighter shade and use this to highlight underneath my eyes. I really, I guys, I really cannot stand excessive product under the eye. The creasing and the amount of texture there looks great on camera, looks absolutely incredible on camera because you have all this light bouncing off. But in real life, it just does not look that good. I wish when he was applying powder the first time, this powder was, um, replace for the powder he used under the eyes, just because, I mean, I don't like that much powder anyway, but because it would have been less product. His poor skin, his incredible skin, that has been covered and caked in all this product. For in that same brow powder, actually, I'm just going to dip back into that dark brown shade, and I'm gonna use this color and be much more careful and go right up against the lash line and create a little bit more of a defined wing. I really like using the brow powder for this because it has pigment to it, but it's not like a super, super opaque eyeshadow, so you actually have time to layer up a little bit. Another trick that I've been doing a lot recently is taking that same brow powder and that angled brush and creating a very tiny line at the inner corner point of my eye, pulling that upwards following the shape of that's a really great technique to get this kind of sculpted like lifted cat eye kind of look um some people especially if you find your eyes might might be further apart it's a nice way to bring them in um yeah really really nice i really really like that technique with the liner with the neutral tones this whole this is a maybe it's just because i love the color beige in makeup but this is a really nice overall um toned look i think it's i think it's really nice Next up, as we all know, comes October, which is spooky season, my favorite time of the entire year. And we started off this month with quite a bang with the James Charles X Morphe Mini Palette, which I just used for my highlighter and blush. Like I said, there's- The highlighter placement is, is really, really nice. Blush paste, he did blush already. Okay, anyway, the blush angle that he's done is also really nice. He has quite a unique face shape where he has quite a structured jaw, quite structured shape forehead, and, and, Obvious like um, cheekbones, but not like crazy up there 
um, cheekbones. So the way he's kind of pulled this blusher and bronzer and um, highlight up into this area is really, really nice. Okay, so let's stop it there. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. From watching his video before, that was me reacting to a few different um, gurus. It was quite childish and it was a back to school thing, I think. Whereas this seemed a lot more mature, it seemed a lot more, um, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. The makeup, it's, and I'm talking about the makeup, because in the one before he was putting mascara on his eyebrows and all these horrendous things. Apart from the excessive powder, which you guys know I don't like, excessive concealer, excessive color correcting, excessive, excessive, product placement, techniques and things like that were actually very, very impressive. I would love to see him do something really natural in terms of skin. Eyes, do whatever you want, you know? But in terms of skin, and same with contour, do whatever you want. And by skin, I mean foundation, concealer, powder. I would love to see him put out there that his skin, he has really beautiful skin and he doesn't need to do that much. I would love to see him do something natural with his face and love it, do you know what I mean? And, and everyone else love it as well. Because I think that's something that we have to do on YouTube is maybe start to go to something that's a little bit less about excessive product. Because it doesn't work for everyone. And I've been told so many times in my comments, it's a comment I always get, and you guys know I have my email where you can email me and send like your questions, and I include them in my um, helping my subscribers video. People feel left out of the makeup industry because techniques that they see on YouTube don't work for them, and they're constantly being told that they should work for them, that baking should work for them, that heavy powder application, that heavy concealer, and because it's real life, it doesn't look amazing in real life. You don't have a ring light with you all the time. There's no post-production on your skin in real life where you can do on camera. So I would love that to be an, something that starts to become part of a beauty community. I think that would be really, really nice. And for people who are leading in the community to be more realistic. Yeah, to round off, I was actually pleasantly surprised. As bad as that sounds, I thought he did a really, really great job of sculpting his face apart from the little contour technique that he could brush up on, everything looked really nice. And there were some tips in there, and this is what a lot of videos lack, beauty videos lack, there were some tips in there that people could actually incorporate into their makeup routine. The sculpting this eye area here, placement of a blush, you know? It was, it was really, it was good. Yeah, I very rarely have good reactions to these videos, as you guys know, so this is really, really nice to film. So, Perfect. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. If you liked that video, I do have a whole playlist of these um, MUA Reacts videos. So go ahead and watch them. If you feel like doing it, please go ahead and subscribe. Like this video, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, all this other things. I still don't know how to use Twitter. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me, guys, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.